the MacArthur Amendment. Out front now, Congressman Tom MacArthur. Of course, he voted for the bill. His amendment is a major reason why it passed. And, Congressman, I appreciate your being with me tonight. Look, a lot of the credit for the bill passing goes to you. You're the one that came in and got this amendment, get the Freedom Caucus on board. It gave states more ability to opt out of providing certain benefits and to uh, have different premiums charged uh, to people with pre-existing conditions. Are you worried that the Senate is going to throw that amendment out? Well, hi. Uh, good evening, Aaron. I, I am focused first on getting the bill through the House and trying to fix what has been the essential problem here. The Obamacare marketplace is falling apart. And if we don't fix it, then the, the millions of people that depend on it today will have nothing. We have 23 million people today that have no insurance. So I, I, to me, it's just uh, impossible to, to ignore the problem that's in front of us. The Senate now is going to face the same questions that we faced. Mm. How do we keep our promise, protect the most vulnerable people, and also bring premiums down? So, so let me ask you, though, on that one crucial question, because when you talk about protecting the most vulnerable, some of them, of course, are people with pre-existing conditions, right? And, and, and my understanding is that this amendment would allow, of course, they've got to be covered, but it would allow insurers to charge them different premiums, in which case, definitionally, many of them would not be able to afford coverage. So is the reality not that under this bill, with your amendment, some of the people, the most vulnerable among us, will not be able to afford health insurance? Well, I think you have to step back and realize that where we are today, markets are collapsing and people have less and less choices. Uh, Iowa announced today that 94 of their 99 counties have no choice, no choice. Uh, what do you do with pre-existing conditions then? The way I approach this, uh, and, I've, and I've talked about this before publicly, but I have seen the effect of no insurance. I saw it in my own home when my mother died and my father no insurance and it took him decades to pay off those bills he didn't pay them off until I was in college and I took that perspective with me every day we have to provide an environment where people can afford insurance and that's not today's environment rates are skyrocketing so the only way that you can bring down premiums for some for most and care for people with pre-existing conditions is to cover the people with the with the the most serious medical needs in separate pools that are paid on the broader shoulders of the taxpayer, not by other policyholders. And that's, and that's basically what my amendment uh, does. So, so let me ask you, because at the heart of this, right, the president said today uh, in the Rose Garden in the celebration, you were all there, that premiums would come down and deductibles would come down. And you're now saying, saying the same thing. But, but is, that, is that true? Because, it, again, it, it doesn't seem that it's going to be true for everybody. Just that's not how the math works. Right, if you have a more open insurance market, which is what you're creating, right? So is he going to live to regret those words? Well, I don't think so for this reason. If you consider why the premiums have skyrocketed over the last eight years, it's because of the structure that Obamacare created. What we said to the states was if you create a risk pool to help the very people, Aaron, that you're talking about, people that have the worst situations, if you create that risk pool, then we'll let you have uh, this waiver. And, and what happens when people are covered in these risk pools, and we, and we set aside $130 billion to help states do it, then they're taken care of and everyone else's premiums uh, can come down then. All right. So obviously, you know, I mean, I remember uh, with Obamacare, right, the CBO said uh, premiums would come down. Obviously, we all know uh, that, that, that they didn't, right? They, they went up an average of 24 uh, percent. This is something, of course, that, that caused Democrats to lose the House and the Senate. And they today were very quick to warn you and your colleagues that your votes could cost you your seat. Uh, the House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi went to the House floor, and here's what she said. You have every provision of this bill tattooed on your forehead. You will glow in the dark on this one. And you heard Democrats, of course, chanting goodbye on the floor. You were there. Goodbye to your seats is what they meant. Are they right? Is that a risk you're willing to take? I actually think it's a, a terribly inappropriate way to look at this. This is not a day for cheering or jeering, in my mind. This is a day to, to, to realize we are facing a serious issue with health care in this country. And I, I, for one, will not allow myself to look at this through a political lens. Uh, look, I represent a, a swing district, one of the few in this country. 
and I'm, I'm certainly politically aware, but this is a much bigger yes. issue than seats and politics. This is about people's but, lives, and, and look, we I, have to do the right thing by them. I hear what you're saying. I understand you think you're doing that. People on the other side think you're doing the opposite, and they're doing that. Uh, but the reality is, is that the vote was not one single Democrat voted for this. So well, this did seem to be completely partisan. And that's unfortunate. Uh, to be honest, uh, I initially voted no when this uh, whole process was set up. I was one of nine Republicans to vote no back in January, and that's the reason I voted no. I thought it was a, a process that was being a bit rushed and uh, really didn't include Democrats. But once the process went forward, uh, everybody, like me, had a choice. Are we going to be obstructionists, or are we going to work to make this a better bill? And that's what I've chosen to focus on. All right. Well, I very much appreciate your time tonight. Thank you. Okay, Aaron. Thank you. And next, new details about FBI Director James Comey's testimony to Congress, classified behind closed doors today. Details tonight out.